18.2 is coming hard and fast. Yeah, buddy. I'm super excited about 18.2. It's going to hurt. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think this is a beautiful dynamic that Dave Castro has conjured up. I've been wondering how they are going to implement a heavy clean, a heavy snatch, uh, just a heavy lift in any way uh, during this open. And I think that they have brought this one in elegantly and beautifully, really maximizing what I believe CrossFit is about and what it entails, being able to move large loads under complete duress. So I'm excited about this. I'm excited to see what you guys can put up and what the leaderboard look, shakes up to look like at the end of this week. Diving into the workout, we have 18.2. And 18.2A, two scores, two different uh, 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 dynamics to this workout. A really hard, tough Metcon, and then a big heavy lift. So let's dive into that and see what the workout looks like. We got a 12 minute time cap. You are gonna be completing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 of dumbbell squats and bar facing burpees. So what that will look like is doing one dumbbell squat, then one bar facing burpee, two dumbbell squats, two bar facing burpees, three dumbbell squats, three burpees, four, four, five, all the way until you've completed 10 dumbbell squats and 10 bar facing burpees. At that point, you now have finished the buy-in to be able to find a one rep max clean. Whatever time you have remaining in your 12 minutes, you have uh, as much time left in that 12 minutes to find a one rep max clean. So if you finish the workout at six minutes, that means you have six minutes to get recovered <laughs> because you're gonna need to recover, get recovered and then establish a one rep max clean. You'll be able to climb in weight. You can go up or down depending on where you are in the workout. If you have your bar loaded at too heavy of a weight, we'll get into what that might look like. You can go down in weight, you can go up in weight, whatever it is, whatever it takes in that remaining time of your 12 minutes, after you've completed the work, you can then be able to uh, find your one RM. So um, let's, uh, let's dive into what that looks like for the RX division and the scale division. Uh, first, for RX competitors, um, the workout is hard and fast. If you're on the competitive end of the RX division and you're looking to make it to regionals and you want to maximize your CrossFit season, you have to make this burn. Lean into the challenge, face it with dignity, honor that and work really, really hard. It's going to hurt and that's a good thing. Take the t short time to recover afterwards and then hit your big clean and we'll, we'll talk about about that a little bit more. Uh, for the rest of the population, for the general population, for the RX division, the workout really matters. This is where you're gonna maximize a lot of time here. And you're gonna want to, you're gonna wanna maximi maximize your time here because you wanna have as much time as you can to be able to do your clean at the end of the workout. So really be smart about how you approach this workout, but really, approach it tough and hard. It's supposed to hurt. You're going to recover and it's not going to take as long as you might think it will. And you're going to be able to get it clean. And that's what I want. I want you guys to be able to get clean. So, uh, here's a couple suggestions. Don't red line early. It's, it's a deceiving workout that will actually trap you into wanting to go too fast, too soon. Don't do that. Um, one of the things that we have up here is uh, round eight is your halfway point. So be smart leading up to round eight and take the early rounds to really mitigate your, your heart rate and uh, the lactic acid that's building up so you don't redline too early in the workout. You're gonna redline in the workout. <laughs> um, so with that, rounds one through seven, there's a lot of transition happening. You're going back and forth between the implements really quickly and it doesn't take long to do each movement. So all of a sudden you're, you're dumbbell squatting and you're burping, you're back to the dumbbell squats, back to the burpees. Those transition and the time that it takes to transition back and forth to those is going to add up and it's going to add up fast. So make sure that you have a plan in place, uh, a strategy in how you set up your barbell that's going to maximize the transition back and forth between the movements 
So you're not wasting a lot of time there because you can, again, you can save a lot of time and you're not gonna have to put out the extra effort and energy to get to the implement to, or back to the dumbbells or back to the bar to do your burpees. Um, one of the things that I also want you guys to think about is when you're doing your burpees, turn while jumping over the bar. Uh, a lot of, I see a lot of people, they will jump over the bar and all of a sudden now their back is facing, uh, uh, facing the bar and they're facing, they're facing away from the bar and they have to turn around to do their burpee. When you're jumping over the bar, turn in the air. So when you land, you either are completely turned around and you can go right down into your burpee or it's maybe you only have to take a quarter turn. Anyways, again, something that can save time over the course of 55 reps of burpees, those seconds, those quarter of a seconds can add up really fast. So uh, be smart there. In this workout, the last three rounds of the burpees need to be fast. Patrick Vellner almost caught up to Noah Olson, even though Vellner's squat rate was probably, I would say half the speed of Noah's it seemed like. Noah was just squatting like a piston. So, but Vellner, when he would get to the burpees, especially on the later rounds, he had a faster burpee cadence. If you've redlined too early and you're not jumping over the bar when doing your burpees, you're gonna waste a lot of energy early on and so when you get to the round of eight, nine, and 10, where you're spending more time doing only burpees, you're gonna be doing your burpees slower and you're not gonna be able to maximize the speed in which you do your burpees and maximize your time overall. So make sure that you've mitigated uh, your heart rate, you're not redlining too early. When you get to round eight, you've gotta be going. There's gonna be a significant difference in your pace when you get to eight, nine, and 10 rounds and especially when it comes to your burpees. So uh, make sure you're just aware of that. When you're doing your burpees, especially again in the early rounds, try to be mindful of the pace that you're going at and if it's gonna cause you to have to break up your squats. I don't want you to get to the round of eight, nine, and 10, or even to the rounds of six, seven, and eight and feel like you have to break the squats up or pause at the top and waste a lot of time. There's not a lot of time squatting here. 55 reps goes pretty quickly. So if you're burping so fast that your squats are not going to be unbroken or you're going to be pausing at the top a long time, maybe be smarter about your burpee pace and take it just a slightly bit slower so you can really push the rate in which you do your squats. Again though, the majority of the time during this workout is going to be spent doing bar facing burpees. For me, I think that if I, do, if I was to do 55 bar facing burpees for time, just 55 bar facing burpees for time, it would take me somewhere around the 2.30 to 3 minute time range, somewhere around there. So um, I mean if I went for broke I might be able to do it faster, but the, the idea there is the majority of the workout is actually spent doing burpees, not dumbbell squats. So be mindful of your pace, but not at the expense of having to break up the dumbbell squats. For the scale division, some things that I want you guys to think about is being smooth through the work. Be very smooth through the work. I want you guys to be able to have good transitions and quick transitions. Same thing applies. I don't want you wasting a lot of time transitioning back and forth. I would rather you take the movements a little bit smarter at a better pace and save time in your transitions, especially in those early rounds when you're one through five, one through six, when you're going back and forth between the dumbbells and the bar face and burpees. Um, round eight, again, that's the halfway mark. At the start of round eight, you've now made it halfway through the workout. Uh, if you're getting to that point and you're starting to feel like you're, the, the time spent under the dumbbell, the time under tension under the dumbbell, is too much and you're gonna have to break them. Again, I've talked about it before and especially in my last one, choose your breaks. Don't be forced to break the dumbbell. If you're forced to break the dumbbell, you're gonna spend more time resting than you probably realize. Genesee and I did a little test where she timed some of my breaks when I was uh, doing a workout and I was getting to the point where I was being forced to break. And she asked me like, where do you, how long do you think it took you to break? And I thought, 
I think, you know, maybe, maybe about five to 10 seconds. And it was in reality, it was closer to 15 to 20 seconds. Your sense of time when you're oxygen deprived and your heart rate is through the roof really kind of goes out the window. So be mindful of that. Choose your brakes if you're gonna to have to break the dumbbells up. Um, same rules apply for anybody in the scale division doing the burpees. If you can uh, turn and jump over the bar, great. If you're stepping over the bar, totally fine. Um, the last three rounds of your burpees should be, a, you should start to pick up the pace, but be consistent. You almost kind of want to be a metronome through your whole, and again, this is for the scale division. You want to be a metronome through your burpees and really kind of just take those nice and easy and be smooth. Um, something of uh, big importance is dumbbell positioning. When you, I, I was watching some people do uh, the workout tonight live at one of the local CrossFit gyms here in town in Spokane, and I noticed the dumbbell was sliding off of the side of their shoulders and they're really having to strain to hold it up. Get that rear dumbbell head up on top of your shoulder and closer to your trap and neck and let your, let your body support the dumbbell. You want your, your, your skeletal muscle and, and uh, skeletal system to be the one that is, is, is holding up. Have your body frame holding the weight rather than your muscle trying to hold the weight. It'll save your arms a lot. Uh, especially if you're focusing on keeping your elbows high, that's also gonna take tension off of your shoulders and your biceps when you get to the burpees. Um, and you really don't want your shoulders to blown up when you're doing burpees, because that's, no one likes that feeling. So, um, with that, let's go to the clean. A couple things to keep in mind. Uh, get a score first, then put your lifters on. A lot of people I've seen in past workouts like this, they finish their workout and all they can think about is getting their lifters on. And the next thing they know, two or three minutes have gone by and they only have a minute left to do the clean. So be smart about that. If you're going to change into lifters, which many of you are, and if, if it's gonna maximize your clean and you know you're gonna have time to change into lifters and maximize your clean, I suggest it, great. If that's something that you do, I personally, I'm gonna stick to my Metcons and just only do, uh, do the whole workout and my cleans and my Metcons just to maximize time, less things to think about. Uh, just kind of minimizing distraction. But if you're going to get, if you're going to get into lifters, even if it's a light clean, get a score. If it's a clean, if, if you want to open at 185, hit a clean at 135, then have, have your friends or whatever put 185 on while you get your lifters in. That way you at least know you have a score and you can move on from there and climb from there. Also, it would, be great to get that lift in because then it kind of gives you a sense of how hard you have to pull because the next <laughs> suggestion is over pull the first rep. Your arms are going to be really tired. Your legs are going to be really tired. And so that first rep is going to feel extremely heavy over pull it. Uh, and, um, just give everything you have to that pull. You're going to hit it. It's going to be great. But, uh, again, may not, may not be a bad strategy to hit a lighter weight really quick, just to get a sense of how that weight's going to feel. Um, what I noticed tonight is uh, the weight that uh, Vellner and Noah opened up at was somewhere right around their 65% range. May not be a bad suggestion for you if you know your current one rep max, maybe open up right around 65% and then make a jump up to the 70 to 80% range, uh, which is what I believe they did. Um, clean timing could be a really useful, uh, useful tool for people. If, if you're somebody who has somewhere from four to six minutes or three to six minutes left after the workout, try to find a cadence in which you do your cleans. Maybe it's on the minute. So if you have six minutes remaining, you can get six lifts in. So for some people, I have a little bit shorter, you know, maybe I have a little bit shorter time, I only have three minutes left. Maybe you can do a lift every 30 seconds. Play with that, get a sense of that and see if you can keep yourself to a schedule and be able to have a clean timing and be able to allow you to maximize your jumps and your attempts. So um, really at the end of the day, guys, this workout is awesome. It's a very cool dynamic. I think you are really gonna enjoy it. Good luck with it. And I just wanna remind you with this, this workout takes courage and it takes resilience. When you get to the clean, if you miss one, shake it off. Like have a short memory, shake it off, move on to the next attempt. For the workout, have the courage 
to face the challenge with everything you have. Everything you have in that moment, give everything you have, honor it, enjoy it, sacrifice all of your comfort for it. It's gonna be a blast. I know you guys are gonna do great. I'm excited to see you on the leaderboard. Good luck, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for tuning in, guys.